is uh, Roberto Lopez and I'm an assistant professor here in the Department of Horticulture at Michigan State University. I have a three-way appointment in research, teaching, and extension. And my research involves uh, working with the commercial greenhouse industry with both ornamentals as well as leafy greens. We are having a lighting open house in collaboration with American Hort and we are inviting folks from throughout the country to come to MSU to see some of the lighting research that uh, we have ongoing in our greenhouses. We're going to cover sole source lighting, photoperiodic, as well as supplemental lighting. We're also going to have uh, several talks that are going to cover a wide variety of topics within greenhouse lighting. My name is Yujin Park and I'm a PhD student at Michigan State University. I'm working with Dr. Eric Runkel and we've been looking at using LED as the only light source for growing seedlings indoors. And currently the typical LED arrays for a plant application only include blue plus red light. And few studies have tested the benefits of adding additional wavebands. So currently I'm focusing on investigating how inclusion of far red light to the blue plus red light influenced the ornamental seedling growth and subsequent flowering. My name is Allison Hurt and I am a master's student working with Roberto Lopez and I'm looking at supplemental and photoperiodic lighting in young plant production. I'm working with cuttings as well as seeds and annuals and perennials. The crops I'm focusing on in my experiments are floricultural crops, annuals, perennials, as well as seeds and unrooted cuttings, and crops that are high value and significant in the Michigan floriculture industry. My current experiment with unrooted cuttings is looking at quality as well as intensity, but my current uh, experiment with seedlings is just looking at uh, light intensity. For my seedling experiment, the whole reason that we were using the lower light intensity is that before I started here, Roberto had done some visits with growers and they were propagating under the low light intensity and saying that they were seeing um, similar quality plugs that were finishing like a week earlier. And so we're kind of finding out that that's because, you know, the low light level, so they're seeing, we're seeing a stretch at the end and larger leaf area. So they're, they're larger plants, but as far as root development and quality of the plug, it's n not comparable. My name is Kelly Walters. I'm a PhD student here at MSU and I work with Dr. Roberto Lopez. Currently I'm working on establishing the photoperiodic requirements uh, for different foliage plants. So foliage plants you grow as annual bedding plants uh, for spring production. So when they start to flower, um, they become a bit unsightly, so we don't want them to flower. We're currently working with a few different crops, um, Alternathera, a sweet potato vine, and irisine, or blood leaf plant. We have a variety of treatments, ranging from nine hour, a nine hour photo period to a 16 hour photo period, and um, a nine hour photo period with a four hour night interruption. We're establishing whether they're short day, long day, or day neutral, and most of them are short day plants. Um, some of them flower regardless or are more day neutral, and some of them um, had a more varied response. So we're repeating the experiment um, to have more definitive results. But for example, um, the Alternathera uh, red hots and red threads, uh, both were short days. So they flowered under nine, 10, or 12 hour photo periods. And then they started to flower, or they had flower buds under 13 hour photo periods. I'm Eric Runkel. I'm a professor in the Department of Horticulture at Michigan State. I have a 50% research and 50% extension appointment with the focus on the production of floriculture and greenhouse crops. Uh, and increasingly we're looking at not only floriculture crops, uh, which would include things like annual bedding plants, herbaceous perennials, potted flowering plants, and plugs and liners, we're also now getting into what I would call high value specialty crops, things such as leafy greens and herbs. We have uh, several different projects now that are focused on lighting, whether it's photoperiodic lighting, which is to regulate flowering, supplemental lighting to increase growth in the greenhouse, and more recently we've been looking at sole source lighting, where we're looking at growing plants indoors to try to produce crops that are perhaps more uniform, grown in a more predictable manner, uh, but maybe even more so have a higher quality and have certain growth attributes that will maybe uh, receive a premium price. My name is Meng Zhang and I'm a master's student here at Michigan State University uh, working with Dr. Eric Runkel. We are doing research on poinsettias using different LEDs. So basically we're trying to use different combinations of light quality and different end of day 
uh, photoperiodic lighting to manipulate the flowering and extension growth of poinsettia. We also want to see whether far red light can be perceived as a long day signal and whether it can regulate the flowering. In addition, we also want to see whether the photoreversibility theory can apply to the poinsettia. We have control group, which is nine hours short day, followed by uh, two hours red, wet, far red, two hours far red only, and the combination of both which is two hours red, wet, far red, plus two hours far red only. Four hours red, wet, far red, four hours far red only, and four hours of red, wet, far red, plus two hours far red only. The reason for doing this research is that for most of the cases, growers are trying to reduce the plant height to get a nice spark. But for poinsettias, um, when it grows under the nine hours short day, sometimes it's too short to meet the marketing target. So we're trying to manipulate the extension growth and plant height, as well as controlling the flowers using different light quality of LEDs. This will help growers to produce high quality of poinsettia uh, to meet the height specifications, as well as controlling the marketing time. My name is William or Ching Wu Meng. I'm a second year PhD student in the Department of Horticulture with Dr. Eric Kronko. And my research is about using different colors of light from LEDs to regulate flowering of ornamental crops in greenhouse production. In the floriculture industry, we basically chose the popular ornamental crops that the growers typically grow in their operations and select the ones that are responsive to the photo period and see how we can control flowering time using different colors of light. I've been doing research on different colors such as blue light, red and far red, and green light. For both green and blue light, we were able to observe a dose response. At a low intensity of about two micromoles per meter square per second, the plant doesn't perceive the light as a long day signal, but when we elevate the intensity to be about 25 or 30 micromoles per meter square per second, the plant is able to recognize that as a long day signal and the flowering time can be modified accordingly.